Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're here with Mark Spencer, and we're going to be looking at Final Cut Pro 10 and splitting from your screen. <laughs> splitting from your screen. No, split screens. Split screens, yes. 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 So, I'm sorry, it's just like the typical thing going back, we have two people on the screen? Yeah, basically, but this is an exploration more of the different possibilities for creating effects in Final Cut oh, Pro okay. 10, and something that you might do in motion, but it's very easy to do in Final Cut. Mm -hmm. And I also want to explore a little bit about cropping in Final Cut. Mm -hmm. So, here I have, um, I have two different clips. We have one on the top, and this is Ali here in a little interview that she talks at the beginning of it. And then if I press the V key to disable it, we have Austin underneath who talks a little bit later. So I'm going to create a little split screen effect for both of them. But before I do so, I want to take a look at the inspector. And I'm going to close the transform controls and close the distort controls and focus on crop. Because in crop, we see there's a type pop-up menu and there's three types, trim, crop, and Ken Burns. Yes. And we've done a bunch of stuff with Ken it's Burns. It's always interesting that Ken Burns was a crop effect. I guess it would be like animated cropping. I guess so, yeah. yeah. But what I want to talk about for a minute is crop. Because if I bring that up here, these controls change to a slider right in the middle. And if, if I drag left on this left slider, the whole image moves off to the left. You might wonder what's going on with that. If I drag to the right on that slider, the whole thing gets bigger. <laughs> what? Yeah, what you might think, you think, what in the world is going on, okay? So I want to explain what's going on and why this is actually a very useful tool, right. okay? To do so, I'm going to enable the crop tool in the viewer. And I can do that either by clicking this little button right here or at the bottom left corner or the keyboard shortcut is Shift C to select that tool. Mm -hmm. So again, at the bottom of the viewer, we have the same three options, trim, crop, and Ken Burns. I'm going to select crop. What crop's going to let me to do is basically reframe my shot. It's really not going to crop the shot. It's going to reframe the shot is the way I think of it. Is this 4K and, footage? Yes, and this is the key. If you've got 4K footage and you're working in a 1080 timeline, this crop tool is outstanding for reframing your shot. And it's much better than messing around with scale, scale and position. And position right. Yeah, which it. you would, would normally oh. do with the transform tool. Let me show you why that's the case. If I drag a corner here, notice it forces it to stay in the same, same aspect ratio. Same aspect ratio, right. So I can drag this and I can reposition uh, this to what, where I want this, how I want the shot to look. Okay, so maybe just like that. I don't want to go to more than a quarter of the original, so that because um, from uh, this is UHD, so it's exactly four times a, a standard 16 by 9, 10, 1920, 1080 frame. So as long as I'm no more than a quarter the size, I'm blowing up more than no more than 200 percent. So I should get full resolution. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that made sense. I don't explain that very well. So anyway, once I get that where I want, check out what happens. If I click done. Look at that. I now have reframed my shot. Per perfect thing. Okay? Yeah. So it's a lot easier than scaling it up and dragging it around and trying to figure out where you are because while you're working with it, you're seeing the context. Yes. You know, which you can't do with a transform tool. So this is a great tool simply to reframe a shot. So I'm going to go back in now um, because actually I'd like to reframe it, but I do want to crop it. So notice what happens if I switch to trim is um, I've basically lost that that blow up yeah. so my message is you can trim or you can crop but you can't do both but you can't do both right you can't do both so what i'm going to do is reset the crop tool and then uh because i can't do both i'm going to open up the transform and i am going to go ahead and scale up just to make her a little larger and part of the reason i'm doing that is because austin is a closer shot and i want them to be similar to each other so you can then copy okay. and paste without having to recreate the wheel every single time uh no just because i'm going to have a picture in, i'm going to have a split screen with them side by side and i'd like them to be about the same size okay okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm using the trim tool which is what i would really call cropping and i'm just going to drag this left one over and you'll notice maybe that we should snap right to the middle. There it is, there. So we can see it snapping, that yellow line is oh, snapping right to the it middle. It is there, that's, yes. see, I didn't even know that was there. So it'll snap right yeah. to the middle, and I, now I know it's right in the middle. I might want to actually move her over a little bit more in X, just to move her over a little bit more, and then use the snapping there so I've exactly split the screen. So she's where I want, I'll click Done, then I'll select Austin, and for him, I just want to reposition him a little bit. Right, because to move the, him the, over. The, the, the cropping was defined by her, so. Right, it was defined by her. He's just underneath. 
So there I have, they're, they're roughly the same size, it's about what I want, maybe I could lower up a little more, it's pretty good. So now she talks, he thinks, he responds, and I have a nice split screen effect. Very okay. Nice, yeah. Now I'll take it one step further because I want to do is animate the split screen into position. So we don't just start out that way. So we start out with her talking, and when she finishes, then I want him her, to come on. Him right? to come on. So what I'll do is I'll I'll move forward to where I want the split screen to be finished in place, and back in the crop uh, in the crop parameters here for her. Let me make sure she's selected. We can see I've got the left is the only one that's been adjusted. So I'm going to set a keyframe for that right now. And then I'll move back in time to where I want that to start, and I'll set that value back to zero. It automatically added a keyframe in that value. Automatically added a keyframe because I already added one. So now if I play that, we can see her talk, and then we can see Austin come in and has his piece. So, you know, not a super advanced, technically difficult thing, but um, something everybody needs to be able to do. And hopefully that explains a little bit about the difference between trimming and cropping. Yeah, it's interesting when you're in a trim mode, there's like a little dotted line. I like to think of like your little scissors, you're trimming, you're gonna like, yes. you know, you're doing a scrapbook and you're cutting out part of the picture. There you go, right? I like that. But uh, I think it was excellent. Um, really, really good tips and good reminder how to work with the tool work, work quickly, especially with 4K footage. Right, a another another place where you've got 4K footage in the 1080 timeline gives you all this great flexibility for reframing shots and, and doing things like exactly like this. Excellent, excellent. Well. Uh, Hope you uh, got a lot out of that episode. It's uh, fantastic if you shoot 4K on your iPhone or you're working with UHD material and you shot with another camera. Uh, great, great, great tip. So you want to check us out at rippletraining.com. Check out uh, Mark's full range of tutorials for Final Cut Pro and Motion and uh, our YouTube channel when we're putting up new content every week. And follow us on Twitter if you want to get those little 40 with a 40 character, 40 word sound bites or 40 character, yeah, yeah, 40 character, whatever I forget. So you know what's going on. Anyway, thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next time.